So let's shift over to uh, the labor issues. Yes. So you made a presentation at City Club a couple of weeks ago where you were uh, very strongly indicated that the labor contract was going to be an ongoing issue for TriMet. Um, I guess my first question is that um, you know, obviously the union has a different position. Uh, in terms of independent analysis, I've seen uh, there seems to be some agreement among the independent views that the, the post-employment labor costs are disproportionately impacting the budget and that's likely to get worse before it gets better. Yes. Uh, so the first question is, how do we get here? Could, could TriMet management not see this coming? I mean, we seem to have gotten ourselves into a bind that's going to take a lot of work to get out of. How do we wind up here? Well, I'd say um, my experience, uh, not even as a TriMet employee, and certainly not all the TriMet manage, manager goes back uh, no more than about 30 years. And uh -huh. so I will say that I think it took two parties 30 years to get here. Um, but I'd also say that this is not a uniquely TriMet uh, problem. I think TriMet is an extreme example when it comes to the post-employment and medical benefits and also the level of medical benefits um, and um, as, as I outlined in the, the City Club, the average region's price for an ATU uh, employee right now is $22,000 a year. For TriMet management employees who have a much more market-based plan, 80% uh, coverage, 20% coinsurance, some deductibles, uh, sort of normal, some uh, premium co-share, we're about half that in terms of TriMet management. So we're leading with the management staff. So that's, those are stunning numbers, uh -huh. and partially those numbers and that, that plan design is what also drives the post-employment benefit. So if we were able to bring those costs down to what is, I think, a reasonable market response um, and what our peers in the public sector have and what our peers, frankly, in other transit districts have, uh, you'd see both the current active employee levels of, of uh, expense as well as those for retirees go down. So that that's sort of step one. Um, but I would also say that it, it is it's absolutely essential that we get a hold of this. And it's very hard and it's very painful. And obviously, I don't have a cooperative partner, willing partner with the ATU just now. But I would also come back very strongly and say it's in everybody's interest um, to make sure that TriMet's finances are sustainable. What TriMet does is absolutely essential to the region. You know how committed I am to public transit and to making sure that we can meet the kinds of needs that this region is counting on us to do. And right now, with that contract, with the level of employee benefit as associated with it, we can't. That's pure and simple. We can't. Okay. You've uh, already mentioned uh, the binding arbitration mm -hmm. decision that's coming up. Um, I think some of us who've been watching this process have found it interesting that at least a couple of times the Employee Relations Board has ruled against TriMet either that uh, something you're trying to do was not procedurally allowable or I think in one case that it was a, uh, an unfair labor practice. I mean, it, I think for some of our readers it begs the question, does TriMet really understand the binding arbitration process or are you in a field that you're not familiar with and, and we're having problems because of that? Uh, well, I, I, as you know, uh, in public statements I've sort of referred to what I have um, uh, described as a bit of a Byzantine process related to the um, binding arbitration process and the, uh, re uh, the regulations associated with that that come out of the uh, employee relations Employment Relations Board. Um, that said, um, I'm not at all defensive about where we've been. I'm also very willing to admit that we've had some missteps along the way and that we can do things better. To that end, um, over the last few months, I've hired a new labor relations executive, a fellow by the name of Randy Stedman, uh, who is a real pro in this and will be providing, I think, great leadership as we move forward on the labor relations issues. Um, I, again, noted that it, this took 30 years to get us where we are in two parties. It's going to take those two parties to get us out of this. Um, I think we just have to step up to it as a region, as a community, if we really believe in public transit and what TriMet does. Um, so, you know, certainly we've not been perfect in the past in terms of our procedurally, uh, procedurally driven responses to all of these things. I think we're on the right when it comes to actually describing the math associated with this. Mm -hmm. I, I want to emphasize, and I, I try to do this every time I bring up this topic, is that this is not anti-union, and this is with full regard for how hard our employees work. 
They work incredibly hard, and they do a great job, as you well know, on a regular basis. Uh, and they deserve good compensation, and they deserve good benefits. This is really about the math, about the current program. It just needs real market reform. Um, and I, I would also just, uh, add a, for a moment, add that TRIMA is not alone in this. You, it's the same problem that the federal government is facing with, mm -hmm. uh, with Medicare expenses. It's the same problem that, to some extent, the state government faces with PERS. Uh, but it's an extreme example, and it is really focused not so much on pension in the case of TRIMA. It's really focused on these medical benefits that just need to get to be real That's in right. terms of the, the market. So we have the, we have the ruling coming up uh, sometime in your next budget year. Mm -hmm. um, after that, what are the steps? What, what else needs to happen to get this under control? Well, there is, uh, in any situation, uh, we're immediately back into negotiations with the union. Mm -hmm. So we start again, uh, immediately. Uh, in the case of the union winning the arbitration, their contract proposal actually ended last November. Mm -hmm. In the case of the TriMet proposal, it actually ends this November. So in any case, we'll be asking the union to come back to the table to address these issues with us immediately. And we'll be um, readying ourselves, if we need to, to move through the, to the ar arbitration process just like we did this time. Hopefully, we can get that there sooner than two years, um, or two plus years, or really two and a half years by the time we're actually done with this, uh, since the contract was expired by the time we get to the solution. Okay. So uh, at the City Club presentation, your co-panelist was David Knowles, who chairs the Transportation Committee for the Portland Business Alliance. And you know, I know David is a planner. Uh, he mentioned that he was trained as a lawyer, and he said that as a lawyer, he felt like uh, binding arbitration favored the status quo, and it was going to be difficult in the binding arbitration context to make the kind of changes that may be necessary. So I guess I'd ask the question, will it be part of TriMet's legislative agenda to change the classification of your employees so that they are able to strike rather than being classified as essential employees and requiring binding arbitration? Well, it's a it's a good question, and I'd be I'd be um, uh, I'd be ver I'll be very honest with you. With it's a it's a great topic of debate right now. Nobody wants a strike. Obviously, mm -hmm. a strike is a bad thing for everybody, the employees and the employers, and obviously the economy of the region and the service to our riders. Um, that said, as I said at the City Club, I believe our current contract is slowly strangling TriMet, and I actually think that we need to get this resolved. The history of labor relations in the country is that the, the way that those, do, those, those kinds of issues do get resolved is you come to a cliff, which is called the end of a contract and, uh, and a decision on one party or another to either accept it or to, uh, or to reject it. Um, so we've now moved away from that sort of status quo or, or a standard um, labor relations environment into what is now what was created for police and fire. And while I think transit is important, I'm not sure that transit uh, union employees uh, uh, are, are the same sort of life sensitive, uh, life safety sensitive that police and firemen are. And that I think, you know, frankly, nobody's going to die if your bus doesn't show up, but you may uh, if your police or firemen. Certain hardships doesn't. if the bus doesn't show up, but um, you're right, it's probably not in the same category. It's not kind of right. the same category. So I think there's a, there's a reasonable debate to have on that. Uh, we haven't come to a final conclusion on that. Um, I would love to see the arbitration process work. Um, candidly, I, I guess I'm sharing pretty candid that, that, that I'm frustrated with it, and uh, I'm not sure that it is working to the benefit of the district or even the employees in the long run, because these are really long-term financial issues that really deal with the security of our employees and their benefits over a long term as well. 